nine. And you can't see it underneath his white tights, underneath that home white uniform, but he's got his right knee heavily taped. That's what kept him out the first handful of games in only minimal minutes the game prior. Tip controlled by Anthony Black. He's another one of those top 20 recruits on this Arkansas team. And they got a bunch of different guys who can handle the ball, including 6'7", Anthony Black, who's listed as their point guard. Here's Smith for three. And he is not hesitant. No, he, he's excited to get back in rhythm for the Razorbacks. Kind of tested the knee a little bit two games ago, starting lineup last game, and, of course, back at full strength now. UNCG is 4-5 and five on this season. They're coming off of a Saturday win against their neighbors from Elon. They were plus 12 in the paint that game. Don't expect that to be repeated tonight. And a big three from Keyshawn Langley, who's coming off of a 15-point performance against Elon. Starters for Arkansas as such. And while Eric Musselman usually sticks with about a seven-man rotation, he's got the talent to go a lot deeper than that. That's Ricky Council, SEC's leading scorer, who's off the mark with his first attempt. Dumped down inside and a tough angle for Muhammad Abdul Salam. He's a tough player down low. The length for Arkansas may bother him a little bit in this game. Here's Smith, puts it on the floor and goes to the Ooh, lob, and that's a great finish by Makai Mitchell. He's a true combo guard. He can score at all three levels, and he has great court vision and also the alpha dog on this team. Such a rare combination for a freshman and you gotta love this just with this head up it's gonna draw the attention and that's how these Arkansas bigs are gonna score it's gonna be off the penetration of the guards not a lot of post-up plays or ISOs down low another big we'll see Jalen Graham the Arizona State transfer got some run against San Jose State this weekend 59 to 23 in the second half for Arkansas against the other Spartans, and that's a big-time block by Mitchell. Well, they've got rim protection here, and again, the athleticism should really bother UNC Greensboro. Uh, they are overmatched at every position. They've got to be patient and opportunistic in the half-court sets. Arkansas's defense is a top-10 defense, according to Ken Palm, their defensive efficiency. A big reason to turnovers. They turn opponents over on 26% of their possessions. Back-to-back -back Elite Eight appearances for Eric Musselman in this Arkansas program. They had a good trip to Maui over Thanksgiving. And, and this team just knows how to win close games, don't they? And, and win the battle at the free throw line. They defend. Late in the shot clock, a force three, and the rebound comes down under the hand of Makai Mitchell. You don't see anybody for UNC Greensboro crashing the offensive glass. That's by design to keep Arkansas out of transition. Here's Jordan Walsh for three. Slow start on the offensive end for the Hogs, just one for four. Well, Coach Musk wants them to play with freedom, but that's a little early in the shot clock with no paint touch, no penetration. Keyshawn Langley had that one kicked. UNCG coached by Mike Jones in his second season after coming down from the mountains of Radford. Two-time Big South Coach of the Year. And he's got SEC experience. He was with Dennis Felton at Georgia, part of that Georgia program that won four games in three days in the SEC tournament after the Tornadoes went through downtown Atlanta. And it was on Shaka Smart's Final Four staff at VCU. Here's Langley, challenge three. Mitchell, another board. Spartans of UNCG have missed their last four. Good cut, and Nick Smith gets in the paint. Yes. You nailed it, Tom. That was a terrific cut. Very active and inspired first few minutes for three and wide. I just love the energy he brings. Smith didn't play the first six games, and a bucket inside for Boss Lida, senior from the Netherlands, whose parents are here in Northwest Arkansas. A lot of things for them to do as tourists this week. They could go out to Crystal Bridges, see some art, or watch your son play basketball. I'll pick the ladder. Here's Black. And Walsh took his eyes off that one. An Arkansas turnover, first of the game. 
Razorbacks will go to the bench early. This is Trevin Brazil entering as Walsh takes a seat. And a lot of highlight real players on this Arkansas team. Yeah, I was just about to say, I mean, when you're the opponent, you think, all right, let's try to get to the Arkansas bench. And then you got Brazil that comes in as the sixth man, just shows you the depth. And yes, Coach Musselman doesn't typically like to go very deep in his rotation, but he's got options if he wants to, all the way nine, ten deep. Big time block by Black, and that's what length of the perimeter gives you. He's a six-seven point guard, freshman out of Duncanville, Texas. And these Arkansas teams always defend the three extremely well with that high stick hand, as they call it, really good on closeouts. Brazil, 39% from three on the season, misses his first, and the Hogs are 0 for 3 from deep. Well, I don't think they've taken great three-point shots, and they, they're just settling right now without really having a rotation by the defense. Ricky Council, the SEC's leading scorer. Here's Black now an open three. That's off. That's a better look. Just unable to connect. Lida was on the Dutch national team. You speak some Dutch to him this afternoon? I did. He's hometown of Bergen Opsel. Excuse me? <laughs> I do. <laughs> I, played, I played at that uh, arena back when I was in, in Holland. When you were a SEAL? I, I asked him if he um, attended any Holland SEALs games. He, he said he, he can't remember. Well, there's always time. Eight seconds left on the shot clock. When we return, UNCG with an early one-point lead. Jack knows this team extremely well. Doing the color for the radio, he said, look, I expect him to attack the basket even more in this game. He gets above the rim. Don't see him. Don't expect him to settle as much with the 15-footer, but he does score at all three levels. That is the third block of the game for Arkansas. Number seven defensive efficiency, according to Ken Palm. And for a team that's loaded athletically, they're kind of picking up where Muss's team was last year on the defensive end. Here's Smith. And he finishes. And, and that's the shot you just have to make them take if you're UNC Greensboro and tip your hat if they make it. Those tough twos, 8 to 10 feet, and just do your best to guard your man. Brazil extends his defense out on Lida. Dante Tracy is the point guard for UNCG, and he gets fouled and takes it off the glass. And he'll have a chance for a three-point play. The transfer from Robert Morris in his second season in the borough. you got to love how aggressive he's been. I mean, clearly is favoring going to the left there, but that's twice he's been able to have success getting into the paint. This time he's just going to drive hard left and take on the contact. Gets it high off the glass. Terrific and one. Tracy's a senior from Orlando at... Robert Morris, he was in the Northeastern Conference Tournament MVP. That was an 1,800-point score. Central Florida Christian Academy before he went to Pittsburgh to start his college career. Devontae Davis checked in at that last stoppage for Arkansas. Smith. Wow. How did he thread the needle on that one? And Brazil crashes the glass, and we got a tie-up. And possession arrow belongs to Arkansas. Well, neither team shooting the ball well early, early on, but for a UNCG team that is 0-38 all-time against the top 25, they, they don't mind this thing being ugly in, in the mud. No, they don't. I mean, they want to control tempo, and they've done a terrific job of keeping Arkansas out of transition, but they also have done a good job of not turning the ball over. You mentioned it. Arkansas turns teams over on 26% of their possessions. That's seventh best in the country. So far, UNC Greensboro passing the test. Smith short on the three. Hogs now 0 for 5 from deep. Wow. Tracy able to drive and kick. And the rebound tracked down by Ricky Council. Gives him three boards a game. 19.8 points a game to pace the SEC. Davis with the blind look. And a foul on the block will go against Muhammad Abdul Salam. Well, despite the foul, good transition defense there because they packed the paint, and they love the fact that Arkansas has already taken five three-pointers. And that's not Arkansas's game. And they're one of the lowest in the country in terms of shooting three-point field goals. They like to get to the rim. So far, the Razorbacks are settling. And that's a credit to UNCG. It's 
Spartans have been to the tournament four times last coming in 2021 under Wes Miller. He parlayed that into the Cincinnati job. Here's Anthony Black. And that is an Arkansas turnover. So 0 for 5 from 3. Uh, pardon me, a blocking foul. Like I said. Who is that one on? That is the second on Abdul Salam, but that indeed is accurate information. Davis wraps it, wraps it around. Here's a corner three coming for Council. And they're still struggling from deep. See, here's the Spartans going to control pace. Again, got to make sure they don't overpass and prioritize milking the clock over a good shot. If they get one, they want to take it. A balanced shot rebounded by Council. And I think you're okay with that because you can't assume that you're going to get a second good look against this team. Brazil's got elevator hops but couldn't squeeze it. Butterfingers here early for Arkansas. As good as Arkansas has been, fast starts against inferior teams hadn't necessarily been their thing. Well, this will help. A four on two. Davis drops it off. Johnson gives it back in the lob. Another missed lob, and then Anthony Black commits the foul afterwards. Well, you appreciate the unselfishness, but you also got to know your personnel. If you're driving down, I don't think you want to hit Kamani Johnson at the three-point line and make him facilitate the rest of the um, fast break. If I'm Coach Muss, I want Devo Davis continuing to attack there instead of putting my center with the ball at the top. I'm able to finish. Razorbacks at 23 fast break points. Over the weekend on Saturday against San Jose State, they haven't scored a single fast break bucket in the first seven and a half minutes tonight. Dante Tracy had it rejected. Another block for Arkansas. Their defense saving grace so far here early on. Brazil has unbelievable timing. Three blocks a game. Evo Davis for three. And another miss from deep. Now 0 for 7. UNCG can't answer. That one was wide coming out of the hands of Boss Lida. Oh, yeah. And an offensive foul on Devo Davis. Uh, he, he was there the whole way. He saw Devo Davis. He was a step ahead of him on that one. UNC Greensboro hanging in. Seven to six as we head to the bottom of the sixth inning here in favor. Shop Academy Sports and Outdoors three-day online-only sale and get up to 50% off the best brand. Five with a decent body of work. I mean, this isn't preseason. We've had those uh, multi-team events over the holidays, and the SEC has stepped up. And then you see, of course, Ricky Council the fourth, the reigning SEC Player of the Week, making a name for himself in Fayetteville. Mizzou's going to have a test coming up, huh? Going to be on the call for that one? Yeah, I mean, Jimmy Dykes will be in Columbia for the renewal of the border war with Kansas. I asked if I could come. You ghosted me. I'm sure you'll have a great You're call. not the only one asking me for tickets. <laughs> it's a foul on Keandre Kennedy. UNCG's leading scorer has been out the last couple of games with an illness. He was a really good player at UMBC. They won the America East regular season title a couple of years ago. Well, that was a good job by Arkansas because you're right. He, he is a guy that's better from three than two. got to be there on the catch with him, almost 40% from deep. But right now, on the three-point shot, Arkansas has got to turn one down. I mean, what their identity is is getting to the rim, getting to the free throw line. We have not seen that much at all in this first half. That's not what I asked for. And <laughs> another settle, and Coach Muss looks to the sideline in frustration. All right, so they are without a make from three. They've only gotten three rim attempts up so far in, in the first nine minutes relative to being 0 for 7 from deep. That is very un-Razorback like. Net got stuck on that pass. They'll play through it. Brazil goes right into his man. Able to get it into the paint, but couldn't score.
Shot clock at 10. Smith had it blocked. Big time play by Kennedy. That was terrific defense by the Spartans. Kel Brown Jones goes to the floor and an offensive foul against the junior from North Philadelphia. I don't know if anybody will catch Jalen Williams' charge record from last year, but it's refreshing to see for a freshman to get in there and understand exactly what the Razorbacks want defensively. They move their feet. Yes, they're athletic. Yes, they have length, but it's the willingness to take charges and commit to the defensive end that has this team in the top at 10. And, and, and similar in Knoxville, you got teams like Tennessee, Auburn, Arkansas, that when you have these scoring droughts like this, guess what? The other teams are scoring drought too. Their yeah. defense allows them to survive some of these shooting slumps. Four SEC teams average double-digit steals. Missouri leading the way with 14. Tennessee, Mississippi State, and Arkansas, the others. Donovan Atwell on the floor replacing Keandre Kennedy. He was joking with coach at shoot-around today. We said, hey, how's Kennedy doing? Is he going to play? He goes, I don't know. Keandre, are you going to play? He said, I thought he was going to play last game. A little bit of a stomach virus, lost some weight, but I think he's ready. Jalen Graham blows the bunny, gets it back, and then turns it over. All conference in the Pac-12 for Bobby Hurley last year at Arizona State. Hogs have missed their last eight. Arkansas team that scored 59 in the second half against San Jose State. They get Black for the foul. That'll be his second. Again, just patience on the offensive end by the Spartans and making Arkansas work a little bit. And the best thing they've done is not take bad shots. And they haven't crashed the offensive glass. Arkansas unable to get any sort of rhythm. And even though you're, you're holding your opponent 3 of 16, you would think that qualifies with the complimentary basketball of getting you going on the offensive end, but they have not got any of those live ball turnovers that usually ignites their offense. Mikhail Brown-Jones hits the first. He's coming off a career-high 20. Brown-Jones has been nearly perfect from the free-throw line this season. The announcer jinx cost of the second one. Smith's floater in and out. Hogs just can't get anything to go on the offensive end. Shooting just 19% to start this game. Didn't connect there, but that's a shot that Nick Smith has practiced a lot. And don't be surprised if that's one of his go-to moves during the course of the season because he's good from three and he can get all the way to the rim. And that's a nice shot for him, even though it's not statistically the highest percentage shot. More times than not, it is for three and white. Ho, ho, ho. Look how the Spartans are just protecting the paint on that inbounds. They're not going to allow any lobs over the top, any explosive plays on those baseline out of bounds. And worst case scenario for the Razorbacks, you throw it in, you turn it over off your foot. Just completely sloppy right now for the Hawks. Nick Smith is a high-energy guy, and he's trying to get everybody fired up. He wants to pick up the defensive pressure. I'll tell you what I loved about him watching that last game. He got probably the most excited he got all game was defending a backdoor cut that led to a turnover. The ball goes out of bounds, and he was amped up to get that defensive stop. And that just goes to show you the type of pride he takes on that side of the court. He'll be Langley handling the point for the Spartans. Kick to the near side, and Atwell from the corner. That's a three, and UNCG has a 11-6 lead. It's just good basketball. Drive, draw, dish. Find the open man. Brazil feeds Council on the back cut, and that is knocked out of bounds and will stay with Arkansas. Hog fans wanted a foul. On the other end, UNCG executed. Yeah, penetration kills. Just get in the paint under control. Draw defenders. Atwell doing a nice job. Spotting up, ready to catch and stick. 
And there's that lob. I mentioned they were not going to allow. Packing it in on those baseline out of bounds. Deep post presence. Lida with the turnaround. And a rebound by Makai Mitchell. It's an unfair question to ask in this game. But you try to figure out who the best five is for Arkansas. And nobody's really played well together so far tonight. No, they, they haven't. They're going to get out well for a trip. And right now trying to figure out who's going to make other guys around them better because when they penetrate, the help is coming and the kickout's there. But somebody's got to step up and get the lid off the rim for Arkansas. I'm shocked, Tom. I mean, look at that scoring drought, 646. Arkansas fans are sitting here saying, look, I, I get the slow start, but this is a little much. Council giving the Hogs about 20 a game. Hangs, and that one's off the mark. And that's exactly what the Spartans want. Make them settle for those tough twos, mid-range jumpers. UNCG's only shooting 22% from the floor, yet the Spartans have an 11-6 lead. They're looking for their first ever win against a top 25 opponent. 0-38 all time, yet they have a first half lead here in Fayetteville. Next time down, we are throwing it down low in the post, and we're going to create an inside shot. Maybe it leads to an inside rebound at minimum and see if you can't get something in the paint. They're plus seven on the glass. They've been a great defensive rebounding team all season. Atwell hits another three. That is his second triple of the game, and UNCG has opened up an eight-point advantage. And the last thing you want is the underdog to have hope, and i got to tell you, Hog fans, Spartans have hope that – Bench was up and cheering on that one. Brazil lost it. It'll uh -oh. be a foul on Keyshawn Langley. There's a good inbounds. They lose the shooter. There's Atwell with his second triple. I'm cramping. Let's go get our best shooter. You're, you're exactly right. I mean, we've even seen players on the court try to step in and shoot the free throws for their buddies and hope the rest don't notice that's an old school trick. I mean, you you obviously boy. hate to see the injury. Yeah. NCG now in a 9 nothing run. We'll see if this can't maybe inspire some play for the Razorbacks, knowing that they have one of their key teammates go down, try to rally around that unfortunate injury. It's interesting talking with Mike Jones today about this game, turnaround, air ball, and what did he say about what this game means to UNCG? <laughs> uh, in terms of, well, Initially, it was somewhat Here's a irrelevant. Steal by now, if they win, it'll be much more and relevant. Keyshawn Langley <laughs> is able to finish on the takeaway. I mean, because you're, you're typically in a one-bid league, and you're trying to prep and be as good as you can for the conference tournament and try to play teams that can prepare you for conference play. Evo Davis with a mid-range. That will snap an 0-for-12 skid for Arkansas. Coach mentioned he felt like Arkansas does a few things that Samford does, so that's a good way for them to prepare. But right now, they're thinking victory. Davis goes behind his back. It's a taken away by Tracy. And then Davis commits the foul on Langley. It's a second on Devontae Davis. Davis taps his chest, says, my bad. Some unforced errors. As much credit as you have to give the Spartans, Arkansas's, Gonna have to look in the mirror at halftime or just keep their ears open to whatever Coach Must says because I think a lot of it has been self inflicted as well. Well, there doesn't seem to be much frustration or a sense of urgency from the Arkansas guys at this point. Uh, I think, you know, body language is okay. But, but the energy and the pop just hadn't been there. And if they can't get it on the offensive end, then they got to get it defensively. But it's just been a tough flow to the entire game. As soon as they get a stop, they turn it over. And so you felt like after that last back basket and stop, they were going to get some rhythm. Not yet. See that. 
Oh, sloppy play. Davis gives it up. UNCG taking a page from Arkansas's playbook. Davis just not himself right now. I mean, this is a guy that's a slasher, an energy guy, reliable player. Hogs 4 of 21 from the floor. And a muscle shot goes in for Muhammad Abdul Salam. Just terrific patience there. He gets it down low. The pump fakes, gets the angle he wants. And can you believe it? An 11-point lead on the road at Bud Walton Arena. Here's Smith. And top recruit in the SEC gets it to go. He's got a half dozen. One thing working well for UNCG so far tonight. They turn nine Arkansas turnovers into nine points. That's enough to account for the lead. Into the corner. Offensive rebound again. Dante Tracy being guarded by Nick Smith. Shook him and drilled the three. And Tracy's got to be thinking, hey, this is great. They want to make me go left. I've gone baseline three different times. They forced me to my left there for the jumper. Yes, Arkansas likes to keep it on that side of the court. But for him, it's favored him a little bit, being able to use that strong hand. Davis can't get it to go. Arkansas just 5 for 23 from the floor. 0 for 7 from 3. UNCG on the other end has knocked down four threes. This kid's a confident shooter. His percentages are just okay, but he has a great release. You see the arc he has on this shot. I mean, look at that ball. It gets almost as high as the shot clock. And he's got that emotion, that fire and passion that stands out every single game for the Spartans. So Makai Mitchell to the free throw line. 0 for 1. He shot the Brazil free throw. And missed it on the front end of a one on one, and now got a chance to shoot his own. Senior from Washington, D.C. Transferred in with his twin brother from Rhode Island. They both started their college career at Maryland. And I wouldn't be surprised if this shot goes in that the Razorbacks don't apply a little bit of full court pressure. With their lack of efficiency on the offensive end, it hadn't allowed them to try to dictate the tempo. And There's another missed opportunity to set up any type of full court pressure. Teams are combined 13 for 47 to start this game. Late in the shot clock again. Atwell for three. And the third offensive rebound of the night. Abdul Salam tracked that one down. Just a step quicker in the reaction time. The 50-50 ball is going to the Spartans right now. And Dane, Arkansas, number one in the country in defensive rebound percentage. They get 77% of their opponents' misses. That has not been the case tonight. Shot clock at two. And Mitchell hauls in the air ball. Here's Black. Now why stop? Able to find Mitchell and finally. Really good. At the rim bucket, right? Yeah, yeah. I thought he could have kept attacking all the way to his left, but he managed to make a heck of an interior pass anyway. Lydus says he'll pull up from three. He's 0 for 2 now. Yeah, they're going to need him to connect on at least a couple of those if they're going to keep this lead. Black and one. And Arkansas looking for some momentum. Might be getting it on Anthony Black's first bucket of the game. And Atwell's second personal foul. Coach Musk says, is anybody going to give me some energy, some passion, make a play for me? The freshman from Duncanville is like, hey, this is a new team. You don't have Jalen Williams. You don't have J.D. Note, all these Tony, all those guys. And that was a team that had their runs, but they also had their bumps in the road, too, before they really caught rhythm. And so right now, Arkansas doing a nice job the past couple of possessions just to close the gap a little bit before you head into halftime to regroup and see if they can continue to be a second-half team. You know, speaking of last year's squad, remember, they started conference play 0-3. They went on a long win streak. They're the first major conference team to do that since UCLA 81-82. That was a team that was really lost defensively, too. They had no identity 
and usually teams try to go a little bit smaller. They do the opposite. They, they went bigger. And I mentioned guys like Audis Tony and others. And Trey Wade, his size and length really catapulted them. But right now, speaking of defense, somebody's got to keep 24 out of the paint. I mean, th this guy has got wherever he's wanted to go for the Spartans. Kamani Johnson takes a seat. Ricky Council just picked up his second personal. He'll stay in the game with three minutes left in the half. Dante Tracy. You, you know he's got a little swagger when he does the ball around his back before the free throw, right. right? I mean, I <laughs> Mike Jones told his team that they'd be playing in the loudest environment they'd see this season. Now, because Arkansas is off to such, such a slow start, that has not been the case. But there's Black. Uh, pardon me, yeah, Black with the follow. You get the feeling that UNCG as the road team kind of welcomes this challenge. Here's Lida deep, and that's rejected. Mitchell sent it the other way, but the Spartans find another 50-50 ball. And, and Arkansas just has rarely been able to put together back-to-back, -to -back, much less three consecutive good plays in a row. And to your point, that's kept the crowd out of it. Here's Davis. Three ball wide right. Seven point UNCG lead. And they'll use the timeout. Mike Jones will talk about it with 2.06 to play in the first half. Coach Must is saying, guys, come on, we can get that shot whenever we want. Whenever we want. And this is an Arkansas team. I'm surprised. Block. It, it hadn't just landed right in their hands to where they could get it and go and catch the Spartans off guard in transition. Credit UNCG. I mean, they have not been overly aggressive. They're a good offensive rebounding team, but they know this is not the game to necessarily crash the boards. More important to get back against the athletes. So the Hogs have five blocks, but UNCG countering that with six steals. Grab some possessions. Loose ball. Tracy finds it. Nearly threw it away, and he did. And UNCG now... All for its last five have been scored in the last three minutes and three seconds. Here's Nick Smith Jr. Into traffic, had it rejected. Boy, and you talk about making him finish over the top. They brought two of their biggest defenders over. Terrific rim protection. Lida, and they'll get Mitchell for the foul. Nope, they'll get a jump ball, and it will be UNCG's possession still. Well, Lida's a good player out of the Netherlands. He's got to be a little bit more aggressive. When he gets it down low, he's not seeking the contact out enough. He, he's acting almost surprised when he gets it and a little bit hesitant, but good job getting the pump fake, but then go seek the contact out, try to get an and one. Abdul Salam trying to handle it on the perimeter. They'll get into the offense late. Nine seconds of the shot clock. Dante Tracy, seven points already. And he'll fire. And they get a bump on Abdul Salam underneath. That's his second. Anything going wrong for UNCG here in the first half. They do have some starters with multiple fouls. Atwell, Kennedy, Brown, Jones, and Abdul Salam each have two apiece. Well, and how important is it for the Spartans to just play solid and not give up any more of this lead before halftime? This has gone as well as you could have expected, especially when you're shooting under 30%. But you got to get in the locker room knowing you have not gotten Arkansas's best shot, and you need all the cushion you can get for the second half. Hogs two for five from the free throw line. Darian Ford on the floor now. Here's Mitchell. Hogs have closed within five. Their defense is towards the Spartans. Held scoreless over the last 343 from the floor. Minute left in the half now. Keep an eye on 23 and wide. He hadn't played, has forward in the past four games, but stay ready for your opportunity. See if you can't pick up a steal. Get to going the other way. Part of this fantastic freshman class. Langley cut off, and he walked with it. 
And I've been there before, Tom. When you're a role player fighting for minutes, you know, that plus minus stat is so important to you. When you're yeah. in the game, you want to see the coach to see, hey, we were better when I was on the court. Here's Davis. 15-footer, good. That's his game. I mean, he's a slasher, a mid-range guy. Hawks fans got to love him seeing one go through the hoop. 6-0 Arkansas run over the last two minutes. And the crowd, finally, a reason to get on its feet. Two and a half second difference shot and game clock. Feed, cut, finish. Boy, Dante Tracy's having a fantastic first half. One second left. Here's Council to beat the buzzer off the front of the rim. UNC Greensboro's head coach Mike Jones said this game doesn't mean anything. Well, now all of a sudden, it does a job defensively. Yeah, I, I think continuing to execute and Keep that focus for the full 40 minutes. They've proven their game plan can work, but expect greater fight from the Razorbacks. And whether they get to the rim or post up, I'd like to see them post up their guard some as well. But I can guarantee you there will not be a three-point shot on this possession. Reach in and a near steal will turn into a foul from Kobe Langley. That's a first on Langley. He and his brother Keyshawn, both from High Point, North Carolina. Now this team. This is a UNCG team that just a couple of years ago under Wes Miller made it to the NCAA tournament, but had quite a rebuild to do, and they've struggled this year. They lost to Towson by three. They lost to Montana State by 11. That's a good conference, isn't it, the Southern? I mean, those guys could get as high as, I think, UT Chattanooga got a 12 seed one year at 12-13. Shot clock at six. Now at three, Nick Smith Jr. for three, and he got it. That's how Arkansas, you said no threes, but they got a good look. Yeah, but the foul started as a new possession. Yeah, that's Sorry. true. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Same possession. Difference. Now a two-point game to finish the resume for UNCG. They got blown out by North Carolina A&T, and now a foul will put Keyshawn Langley at the line for a three-point opportunity. Typically when a guy drives at his own player that tells his teammate to go back door and that's what happened on that last one terrific vision watch how he's going to set him up here he's just going to dribble at his teammate when he dribbles at him that's a sign to go back door beautiful pass nice finish langley boys have some uncg connections the high school coach at southwest guilford is guy shavers he played at uncg and their dad Still holds the three-point percentage record in UNCG history. Best shooter to ever come through, statistically. Minute into the half. Nice shake by Black. And then Black is able to draw another foul on Kobe Langley. Black does a really good job. When he gets in the paint, because he's got such a big build and body, but he, he's typically not out of control. He kind of does a little bit of that Euro step, side step, and just kind of slowly gets closer and closer to the basket. Walsh left wide open, and he's off the mark. You, you think Arkansas kind of settled for the threes in the first half? Absolutely. And this is a team that much more prefers to be in the paint at the rim. Mm. And wow, I mean, after that Nick Smith three, you felt like Arkansas was going to get some of that rhythm. And UNCG's offense, which has been nowhere to be found either, five quick points. They've got six layups. This is just too easy. This is an Arkansas team that is a terrific defensive team. But they have not necessarily guarded off the bounce extremely well. This time just too easy. Right there in the paint. Got to cut off. The man puts that foot on the baseline. Need him in the chest. Dante Tracy commits his second personal. Nick Smith Jr. Comes down the free throw. He's trying to get this team going. Devo Davis off the bench now will replace Jordan Walsh. I will say, just a minute and a half into this second half, that the pace has been to Arkansas's favor. Uh -huh. Even though it's UNC Greensboro has scored, 
the Spartans have, have, have played faster in the shot clock, which I think benefits the Hogs. And now they'll be able to put pressure on. Tracy's got it, guarded by Ricky Council. Oh, Black took a shot when Langley reversed. Keyshawn Langley, they'll get deep in the shot clock again. Nine seconds left. Abdul Salam cut off and had that one corrected in air. Ricky Council for three. The Sidewinders off again. Razorbacks just one for 11 from deep. I just don't get it. You never got a paint touch. You only made one pass. And Council, who's one of their more athletic players and can get his own shot up whenever he wants, mid-range, been ineffective so far tonight. Kobe Langley is able to feed Lida, and he gets it up and in. UNCG post players outperforming Arkansas's front line. Yeah, we asked for Lida to be more aggressive and assertive when he got the paint touches. That was the best one he's done so far in this game. Reverse won't go. The foul on uh, Boss Lida. In the first half, Lida was getting this ball in the interior, and he was hesitating too much, shying away from contact. This time he seeks it out. Nice, quick, physical jump stop finish at the rim. It'll be a two-shot foul for Ricky Council. Council leading the SEC with 19.8 points a game. He is scoreless right now. 0 for 5 from the floor. His first free throw attempt coming. This season, Arkansas has been a much more efficient team in the second half. And they need that tonight. Uh, avoid the upset. Uh, this should not be a difficult task to have a better shooting percentage in no. your first half. But they might need all 55% of that average to come back in this one. But good job of Ricky Council of fourth who does a quality job of getting himself to the free throw line. That was his first trip. Connects at nearly 80%. See if that doesn't get him going some. And here he is being a ball hawk. Tracy uses the screen. They got the switch. Council came back to him. Mitchell challenged it. Got his hands on the rebound. Arkansas chance to run. Smith will take it himself. And he gets it to go. One of the rare opportunities for them to get it in transition. They were able to get the shot block, get it, and go. Well done by Smith of taking advantage of a retreating defense. Love Walton Arena coming alive. And Smith's defense a little too aggressive as he gets charged with the foul. You're right. I mean, he, he, you love the aggressiveness. You love the passion and energy from Smith. But don't get caught up in a fist fight there defensively. Stay solid. They, they called that on Anthony Black. I thought that was on the ball from Smith. Instead, it's the third on Black. Baseline jumper, no. Smith high to get it. And then a foul on the floor on Devo Davis. Who sent McCall Brown Jones sprawling? So both Davis and Black have three. It, even when the whistle goes against them, I see positives here. Now all of a sudden, this home court advantage is starting to come in. The fans are booing. The crowd is into it. The players are showing some passion, frustration. They get the foul on Davis there, preventing Arkansas from getting the numbers in transition. Corner three off the mark. Anthony Black pushes ahead. Here's Smith. You like the idea that Muss is sticking with the guys with three fouls right now, including Davis? Uh, I do. Uh, I think you let him play through it. And right now, I don't think he cares who's in foul trouble. He just wants to see production. And I like what they've been giving them on the defensive end. 
Russ looking for some caffeine. Here's Smith. Blindly throws it up, and he's able to draw the foul on Keandre Kennedy. There he is, getting the crowd into it as well. Talking to the fans, talking to his team. Not settling whatsoever, being the aggressor. Nick Smith, Jr., freshman at a North Little Rock High School. Rated the number three recruit in the country, number four in the draft rankings. McDonald's All-America, Jordan Grand Game Co-MVP. Tom, you can tell on some of these drives by Smith how much he trusts that knee right now. Yeah. I thought that, you know, when they, they brought him in in his first game two games ago, just played six minutes, got a feel for things. Last game played well, but you didn't see him go all the way to the rim very much. A lot of pull-up jumpers. This game's been a much different story. He was wearing a, a pair of tights in the first half. He, he still has them on, but that right knee wrapped, and he took scissors to the left leg. Decided to go one leg long and one not. Now he's trying to fire him up. Two-point deficit for the number nine team in the country. Hesitation. Ball kicked around by Arkansas. Davis gets it. And now Mitchell pushes up. Into the corner. Time to tee it up. Anthony Black got it. And the odds have their first lead of the game. Pardon me, first lead since it was six to five. Reverse, no, Mitchell board. Eight nothing, Arkansas run, black for three again. And Eric Musselman just turned and shook his head after that possession. The Spartans have to slow it down now. They're playing at Arkansas's pace, shooting way too early in the shot clock. Turns into a four on three after the screen up top, and the three ball's good for Donovan Atwell, his third triple. A nice penetration there by Langley and Atwell. He is shooting the ball with some confidence, isn't he? I mean, when he catches that thing, he is ready to stick. Davis with the crossover. Goes hard and takes it off the window. Another good paint touch there. That hang time. These Arkansas guards so good at finishing through contact at the rim. UNCG getting its real first taste of this road environment. Three ball. Answer. <laughs> it's that well again. How about that? I mean, the first few he made were wide open. That one was just in the defender's grill. Davis, mid-range. Nobody else touched it. Another empty possession and a push for Greensboro and a bucket in transition. Mikhail Brown-Jones. What a read by Langley seeing the taller Teammate ahead with the height advantage who just mossed Davis a little bit on that. Taken away by the Spartans. So that Arkansas run got up to 8 0. That is now erased. UNCG has never beaten a top 25 team. They're 0 4 all time against SEC teams in the top 25. Last time these teams met, 2001, Nolan Richardson got his 500th win against Fran McCaffrey's Spartans. Tracy off the front rim. Chance to push if they want it. And UNCG, good transition D. Mitchell, got it. I like it. The Hogs have to do more of that. I know in a typical game, they don't play through the post as much. But in this one, they've got to force the issue at times. Team struggled to shoot in the first half. Much more efficient second half. Hogs 5 of 10 from the floor. I mean, really impressed by the Spartans' response to some of these runs. 
And a UNCG turnover. Brown Jones couldn't find it. Davis has him fired up. But the ninth-ranked team in the country still trails by three. Yeah, the Spartans will not go away. The three ball by Atwell. That's four triples for 12 in blue. But then the Hogs getting it done down low. And they're calling the Hogs home court advantage intact. was an awful offensive performance from both sides in the first half. UNCG shot 33%. Hawks shot 35%. Now the second, both sides have figured it out. How's your lung capacity? <laughs> you, know, you said in the first half, Tom, that Coach Mike Jones of UNC Greensboro told his team this would be the loudest environment they play in all season. I think at halftime they were thinking, man, Coach was just trying to <laughs> Mess with us, get us ready for the game. They're they got a zone for the first time. Davis in the paint. A beautiful defensive possession for the Spartans to mix it up coming out of the timeout. Challenge shot inside. Razorbacks come up with it. Devo Davis behind the back. And the transition foul on Mikael Brown Jones. That's his. Third. Well, Mike Jones threw a wrinkle at Arkansas coming out of timeout in the zone. Let's see if the because his head was up and he was looking at the opponent and he lowers that shoulder. That must be what they saw. They said, hey, that was a little bit of a premeditated collision as opposed to incidental. So it'll put Kamani Johnson at the free throw line. Razorbacks 8 of 13 from the line. Got another one coming, and then Hogs will have possession. First point for Kamani Johnson tonight. Two-point deficit. Nick Smith got a bump on his cut, and it was just a little knee from Donovan Atwell you watch Nick Smith and it's obvious like he's played a lot of ball he's got a great feel for what he wants to do on the floor right before that play he had his back to the baseline and he was pointing trying to deke the defense saying that he was going to the near side corner and then he just kind of set him up with a change up before he burst into his cut I love it just the, the KG veteran type move great evaluation on your part I uh, I remember I had to do it because I wasn't the athlete Nick Smith was. <laughs> but if you regarded me, I would say something loud enough so you could hear it, but my teammate couldn't. I'd be like, hey, Chris, I'm coming to screen you on this. <laughs> and the defender would actually think I was dumb enough to tell him the play, and then I'd break the other way. I'd get myself open, and I could run the play and maybe not get finished that quickly. As long as you got Chris open. That's right. Nick Smith's got 15. He tied again this time at 41. Going to get Smith trying to fight his way through the screen. It's his second. Uh, that's one of the things we look back at last year's lost production. J.D. Note, for as good as he was on the offensive end, man, he was a pest on the ball. He could pick you up 94 feet, get over the top of screens. Nick Smith certainly showing the effort there. Just has to get a little bit closer on the ball, squeeze through those ball screens. Note was a guy they could lean on in the biggest of games. Had a monster game against Auburn in the win here against number one. Just their third all-time win against number one. Langley with four on the shot clock. They slough off of him. Now one on the shot clock. Tough two. Rebounded by Kamani Johnson. Smith for three. And teammates bail him out with an offensive rebound by Johnson. Davis with the crossover. He'll take a 15-footer. And then a push-off not called on Abdul Salam. Look at Langley go to work. And Council got his hand on it. Remember, Arkansas playing without Trevin Brazil, the 6'10 
Transfer from Missouri. Suffered a knee injury late first half. He's on the bench and will not return. And when you're looking for momentum and get the crowd into it and those big runs, I mean, he's one of those guys with just the momentum-changing, game-changing type blocks and dunks that he can provide. Someone else is going to have to give that spark for the Razorbacks. Indeed. By Anthony Black. And a great pass, and it's left short. Once again, late in the shot clock. Not a whole lot of possessions for Arkansas due to the ball control for UNCG. Uh, if I'm Nick Smith, I'm getting it right back. I mean, I, I like the matchup. Yeah. Got the 6-10 light on him. Instead, Davis reverses. That was halfway home and it bounced out. It's been that kind of night for the Hogs. Now line a run in the floor, and he gets fouled by Avante Davis. That is number four. For number four for Arkansas. Well, both Langley's have been just pinpoint accurate with their transition passing. And a nice job there on the catch. I, I can't say enough about this Spartan team. Only five turnovers in the first half. Just one in the second. Again, this is an Arkansas defense that turns you over on 26% of your possessions. That's seventh best in the country. Yep. Spartans not giving in that category. Kai Mitchell back on the floor. We haven't seen his brother yet tonight. Twin brother usually gives him eight minutes a game. Akai, 17. We did see on the interior Jalen Graham for a few minutes in the first half. Low scoring game. Arkansas scored 99 last time out. They're averaging just about 80. And they'll have a hard time finding that number tonight. Mitchell. Posting up hard and light of fighting through it commits a foul. And that's what you and I have been talking about of forcing the issue down low. That was a high low look. They did a little horn set at the top where Smith can go either way, and then a big to big pass down low. And you can look at the statute and you say, man, Mitchell's quietly almost at a double double nine points, 11 boards, three for three. Maybe we need to get that guy more touches. Well drawn play by Coach Musselman there. So Makai to the free throw line. Knocks down the first. He's into double figures now. He's the older brother to McCall by a grand total of two minutes. <laughs> does, that, does that mean he gets shotgun for life? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> gets to blow out the candles first and everything. Yeah. <laughs> Hogs by one. Tracy lost his footing. He has had Yeoman's effort tonight. Good ball fake. Rebound by Mitchell. Here's Anthony Black. Black just three for seven. He turned it over. Arkansas was favored by over 20 points in this game. They scored only 21 points in the first half. Langley down the lane. Fantastic defense by Kamani Johnson. Spartans get four back in transition. Mitchell on line. And I step through, but he missed it. It'll be UNCG basketball. They got it right where they wanted. The post seal. Good entry pass. Mitchell for the first time this evening. Unable to connect. This is the bunny. So the trade-off is you have a bigger, more physical team in Arkansas, but maybe not quite 
the quickness on the perimeter. So does UNC try to get these bigs away from the basket, make them guard the ball just like that. Indeed, and Tracy wins the race to the rim. There you go. Get the big out there in the ball screen action. Well done by the Spartans. In over four minutes since Arkansas made a bucket. Council hangs and he spins it in. First field goal of the night for Ricky Council comes at the 8.15 mark. I can't tell you how tough of a basket that is. I mean, in the air, getting the contact, fading away with your left. Near steal by Smith. One of the things that Mike Jones warned his team about with the noise in here tonight was once one player has a play call, he wants all four other players to echo it. He said, I don't care if they know what we're running. We need to know what we're running. Lida takes a seat. 6'10 senior get a breather. Replaced by Brown Jones, who's got three fouls. See, Arkansas got away from that two big lineup. I think they want to be able to guard the ball better just like that. Black has the rebound. Arkansas by only one. Black tried to throw a backdoor cut to Nick Smith. He wasn't going. Razorbacks have found a little bit of rhythm. Continues to be back and forth. And here's Tracy with another bucket going to his left. The speedy, crafty veteran. And then Ricky Council. How about that? With the left and kiss off the glass. We've got a good one in Fayetteville. Jack. But Nick Smith has been sort of ball dominant. I think Ricky Council's got to get in the mix and assert himself a little bit more. If UCG pulls off this win, it'll be the fourth most at 38 consecutive before a team's first win over a ranked opponent. In the AP pool era, that goes back to 1948. UC Santa Barbara beat UNLV in 88. Gaucho had lo Gaucho's had lost 51 straight. High percentage look, and Arkansas able to get a foul on the Smith attempt. That is the second on Keyshawn Langley. Saw another look at the zone there for UNC Greensboro. Better adjustment, play call by the Brazerbacks. Nice cut along that baseline by Smith Jr. The, the resiliency of the Spartans, though. I mean, this is an Arkansas team that came out of the gates in the second half, had a mini run, had yep. another run, and UNC Greensboro, who is not an efficient offensive team, found a way to manufacture points and hold off this Arkansas team to where I did not think it would be a one-point game this deep into the second half. 20th free throw attempt of the night for Arkansas goes for Smith. That will continue to be an issue for UNCG, not just with the Hogs being in the bonus. But so many of UNCG's key players in foul trouble. Langley turns the corner. Out to Kennedy. He'll let it fly. Whoa! Keandre Kennedy with his first field goal. The Atlanta native puts UNCG back up one. That might be the most unconventional kickout for a three I've seen all season long. I mean, get all the way to the rim and then kick it out 30 feet to the opposite slot. NCG back in the zone. They ran it right about the 12-minute uh, mark of this half. Only for one possession, though. Council fires. This is an Arkansas team, just two of 16 from three. Feel like you could have gotten that shot at any point. Pinballs around, taken out of there by Devo Davis, who's playing with four fouls. Black gives it right back. Davis turn around. He's only hit one of... Maybe four of those mid-range jumpers tonight. The quality of looks for Arkansas has been so low in this ball game. Credit the Spartans, but I, I think the lack of patience by Arkansas, they're so accustomed to getting the shot they want on their own, and when they're unable to do so, they're forcing the issue a little bit too much. Davis is three for 12. Langley faked right, went left, and he finishes. Kobe Langley says he's too small, can't guard me. <laughs> They're feeling it right now. We mentioned at the start of this game, the last thing you want to do is give the underdog hope. 
Yeah, no looking back now. Ah, woo! That's Mekhi Mitchell with the dunk. That's a zone solver. Good things happen when 15 and White gets the ball down low. Brown Jones puts it on the floor. And Mitchell comes up with the block. Eighth block of the game for Arkansas. Mitchell impacting on both ends. Well, this is a little bit better than settling from deep from 30 feet out, right? Get it on the interior. Another nice pass along that baseline cut. Second breakdown in that area for UNC Greensboro. You see the teammates arguing there about who is supposed to cover that baseline cutter. And Mitchell quietly has been a monster in this game. As ugly as it's been for Arkansas, 13 and 13 now for the big man. Smith got a piece of it. Spartans will have seven seconds left on the shot clock. A little surprised by the lack of on-ball defense by Arkansas. These yeah. guards are allowing way too much penetration on straight-line drives by the Spartans. Wide open for three, but off the back rim for Kennedy. Tap to Mitchell. Council out to Smith. Can't draw the whistle. It's out of bounds off of Arkansas. That was a quick empty possession. Yeah, it, it was. It, I hate to be a broken record. I, I just I just think the paint touch through the post has been Arkansas's best offense. Maybe not for the season, but for this game it has been. Shot clock at 10. Tracy around the screen. Now at 7. Try to fit it in. Lida got taken away. Here's Anthony Black on his own. He'll go to the free throw line, but once again, can't get it to fall. The rare live ball turnover in favor of Arkansas. Tracy just got a little bit too deep. Couldn't find his teammate. Just eight turnovers on the night for the Spartans. Good job by Black. Pushing that transition, being opportunistic. So that's a fourth personal on Keandre Kennedy. Remember, he hit that big three a few possessions ago. Anthony Black. To the free throw line. Arkansas play Baylor later on this season. Anthony's dad, Terry, in Baylor's Hall of Fame. For his great basketball career with the Bears. Mom Jennifer played soccer there. Well, he put the... Terrific jeans on full display at the Maui Invitational. Put the world on notice. Not supposed to wear jeans in Hawaii. <laughs> Hogs is two for their last ten. We're tied at 49. Three ball. And Davis with the rebound. And through the foul from Mikel Brown Jones. He picks up another. And that's his fourth personal. You know, mark that down because that ball looked okay. like it was going in the bucket. Just barely went off the back rim. Atwell, the hottest shooter for the Spartans. What could be a five-point swing. I mean, that looked money from our angle. Turns into free throw opportunities for Arkansas. So Devontae Davis goes to the free throw line. 71% on the year coming in. Where points have been at a premium in this game, you'll see how good of a look this was for Atwell. I mean, the whole bench thought that was going in, and then it just turns into free throw opportunity. So that's just kind of one of those hidden potential five-point swings in a game. See if UNC Greensboro can find another quality look. 51-49 with four minutes to play. Corner three, Langley. Back-to-back -back misses from deep. Council, and that is an offensive foul. Eric Musselman's trying to keep his temper. He's not happy with that call. Whether he liked the call or not, 
This is a clutch defensive play in transition where Tracy gets in. Minutes, and he, he's just done a terrific job of attacking the rim. Mike Jones told us today after UNCG shoot around that this game was, quote, irrelevant, meaning we're shooting for success in the SOCON and our postseason tournament, but it'll be a good test of where we are, good feel for where we are. Who needs to step up for UNCG in the final 345? Uh, I like the penetration by Tracy. If, if Arkansas is going to try to keep this ball on the side of the court like they like to do, then put your head down, keep penetrating. Razorbacks have had a hard time guarding the ball in this game. And again, able to break him down, but Langley can't finish. Nick Smith with the rebound. He'll bring it up. See what Eric Musselman drew up in the timeout. UNCG's zone has been effective. Smith dumps it outside. Here's the rotation to Black for three. Huge three for Anthony Black. His second of the night. Hogs is three of 17 from deep and now lead by five. Do the Spartans have an answer? Tracy mid-range. And a rebound, Caroms to Smith. You mentioned that five-point swing. Since then, Hogs haven't allowed a bucket. Black cut off. Good D, Abdul Salam. Davis again misses. He's now five for 13. He rarely misses that one. I mean, that is his sweet spot. Wide open. Spartans down five, looking for their first ever top 25 win. Three ball good! Kobe Langley with his first triple, and we've got a one possession game with 2.06 to play. Kobe Langley, the senior out of high flies on that terrific first half where their defense carried them, and in the second half, their defense still been very solid, but their offense has taken away some of the pressure for their defense to be just perfect. Those are the particulars down the stretch. Possession era belongs to Arkansas. We've had four ties and 11 lead changes. UNCG has led this game for 29 minutes to just 540 for Arkansas. Two minutes to play. Nick Smith Jr., one of the top freshmen in the country with the ball in his hands. They're rising to their feet here, Bud Walton. Smith with the crossover, nearly lost it. Here's Ricky Council, SEC's top scorer, and he got a bump. He got Abdul Salam leaning. And that'll put Ricky Council to fourth transfer from Wichita State at the free throw line. Uh, this is an amazing pump fake from deep. This is how he's able to get into the paint here and draw the foul. Tracy's been a terrific defender all game long, but that time leaves his feet and allows a great free throw shooter to get an angle on the big man down low. Council two for two from the line tonight. Got to mop it up. After a couple of bodies went down. Council knocks down the first. So one more for Council. It's a four-point Arkansas lead, 145 to play. Langley, that cut off, good D by Black, and a takeaway for Arkansas. Smith ends up with it. All the way to the rim. And the Razorbacks strut their way to a six-point lead with 90 seconds left. In a game where Arkansas has been unable to create offense from their defense at the most important time, the Hogs step up and Nick Smith.
does the rest. I mean, you talk about getting and go. The Spartans have done such a good job all game long of not allowing the transition bucket. Credit Smith for not pulling it out and wasting clock. Realized he had the advantage. Three-point play for Smith. 129 to go. The lead is now seven. Here's Langley. His brother cut off. Abdul Salam got deep, and he got one! Muhammad Abdul Salam with just his second make of the game, and he stops the clock with 1.14 to play. The big fella. The graduate senior says, I need all 255 of girth to get this and one and just bullies his way to the basket to keep hope alive for the Spartans. Abdul Salam from Abidan, Nigeria. Played up the road. Camp Kanakuk at Linkier Prep up in southwest Missouri. He's got five. The deficit is four now. 110 to play. Interesting they keep the ball in Nick Smith's hands. Smith has to do a better job of sending his defender into the ball screen. Make him use it. There you go. Seven seconds left on the shot clock. Smith around the screen. Now three. He's going to pull from the logo. He's off the mark. Tracy's got it. Down four, 42 seconds. Cross court to Langley. He'll put up the three in transition. And that was the one UNCG needed. Now the Hogs the other way. Davis widely pulls it out and draws the fourth foul on Abdul Salam. Well, good job by Devo Davis. Hanging in tough. Has not been his best game, but picks up a clutch defensive rebound. Has a chance here to extend this lead. Possibly be a nail in the coffin for a Spartan team that struggled to score in the half court or get any quick hitter threes. Davis has not shot the ball well from the floor, but he's perfect from the free throw line. Two for two. So there's a Greensboro team which has knocked down eight threes tonight. 8 of 25. They had a good look in transition last time. Davis makes it a six-point lead. Hogs will show some token pressure just to get in the way. Going to need a quick bucket and a foul. Langley for three. Huge! Wow. Kobe Langley with his second three in the last three minutes. It's a three-point deficit. UNCG uses a timeout with 21 seconds to play. And he's been able to do it just kind of off the bounce. Anthony Black will inbound. We got Tracy kind of playing center field to try to pick up the first cutter. It's Smith. He's covered. They get it inside. Yeah, go ahead and foul. I don't think you can waste any time to try to let it get past half court or gamble for a steal if you don't get it on the inbounds. Conserve clock. And so that'll put Ricky Council the fourth at the free throw line. 78% on the season. Council four for four tonight. Hogs at 76% from the free throw line tonight. That's been what has saved them on otherwise a cold shooting night. That could be the one that seals it, making it a two-possession game with 19.4 left. This is what great scorers and shooters do, though. Even when you're not at your best from the field or from three, being a reliable free throw maker for your team where he's been able to connect on five of five heading into this one. Rattled at home. Spartans down five. Need a miracle now. Step back three. Langley off the back iron. Ten seconds left. They got to get another one up and get a foul. They got to hurry. Extra pass. Five seconds left. It is in and out. And the rebound comes down in the hands of Nick Smith. 
And he is fired up for this one. A lot closer than the odds makers thought. And Arkansas had to battle throughout. I don't think this looked like a top 10 team in the country tonight. But when you're a good team, you got to win ugly sometimes. And the Hogs are going to survive. A well-disciplined, well-coached Spartan team. And I just love the emotion of Nick Smith Jr. And I mentioned it before last game. I mean, the most excited he got was when he defended a backdoor cut. I mean, this guy has a passion to play both ends of the court. And he is going to be embraced by this fan base. 19 points, uh, pardon me, 20 points now for Nick Smith Jr. Go with four boards and three assists. It took him 14 shots to get there. And that's the end. Arkansas withstands a tough UNCG run. Spartans put him in the mud. Arkansas held only 65 points, including 21 in the first.